Hey guys, what's happening? So, in my previous video I showed you this Raptorium setup. It's a, uh, you know, mini ITX motherboard, and it's my 700 watt power supply, but I wanted to design a case, or 3D print a case, um, that would actually be all like a self-contained unit. I've actually done a few of these things with like mini or uh, micro ATX, but I want it to be a small footprint, and I can just store it away and just mine away. But let me show you some of the other stuff that I've done, uh, the crypto stuff, and <clears throat> like one of the fun things about crypto mining is designing all the accessories for it. So let me show you some of the stuff I've done real fast. So this is one of the first things I designed originally. It's a micro ATX all-in-one. This was like my tester. So if I actually had a bigger motherboard, it's it's also good for crypto mining. Uh, so this is micro ATX power supply underneath it. And I'll show you my mining rig. All right, so here is my crypto mining rig. I've done several videos about this. That's 100% 3D printed. Yeah, actually, I took the first design, the Micro ATX bottom, and then I kind of expanded to it, added the side panels and fans, and then I also designed this power supply mount, the keyboard tray, um, this monitor mount right here, switch button, all kinds of different things for this thing. But, uh, all right, let me come back. So, and then the first part there, I've already designed it. I've designed it in Fusion 360, Autodesk Fusion 360. And it's actually going to be the lower base. It's going to be a two-part thing, but I designed the lower base, so the the, the power supply mount. And then I'm going to have a separate top panel that connects to the motherboard, because I want to separate the the heat. I don't want the heat coming up from the power supply into the bottom of the motherboard. So I'm going to kind of create like a separate layer. But um, all right, so I got to get in Fusion 360. Here are my 3D printers. If you're new to my channel, got an old printer bot. Um, it's actually still my favorite printer, and um, I also had this uh, heavily modified. It originally was an E10, a Craigslist E10, but then it's expanded. I have a huge bed on it now, and it's definitely not stock. I mean, all linear rails, and it's kind of like my primary, like larger printer. But it's small stuff, I, I prefer this printer, the printer bot. All right, so now I also have a little CNC machine. I've done other videos about that. Um, okay, so. Yeah, I've already designed the part. It's got a you know, printout. I'll show you in Fusion 360. At least my ideas and my, my thoughts of you know designing this thing and why I designed it the way I did. Alright, so I made two different versions of this box. So this is the first version. It had like the round holes and they're kind of like a more rounded top. And then on the second version, I have it with just kind of like vented on the sides. They're basically nearly identical. Um, just different kind of like a layout. All right, let's go print those out. Let's see how they look. All right, here I'm starting the print. So it's going to take about two days. Twenty-five percent infill, PLA plus, inline PLA plus. Um, speed is sixty. We've got a good layer of these in here. Alright, I'll do an update in about an hour. So it said it would take about uh, two days to build the bottom part. So right now I'm currently designing the top part, the lid. Alright, top is finally done. Had a couple of mishaps. I had, uh, let's see that. I had one that it actually hit. Uh, did a layer shift here. Typically, when you get a layer shift, it's either you didn't put enough support for overhangs, or uh, you might have a loose belt, so it just basically slips a slips a notch. All right, so get this thing off here. It should just pop up. Well, it should be cool enough. Can't do it with my hand. All right, so here is the uh, lower half, and. So I created two different versions. This is my first version. That's my second version. Um, I, I like the, the look of this, the second version better. Now, it really depends on the capability of your printer. Like every printer is actually different in how much you can get, over, get away with with overhangs. Um, you know, the more warping you have, what happens is when the, when the edge curls up, if you have too much overhang, it curls up, then the actual hot end will hit the, the curl edge and then that's where you get the... Uh, 
layer shift. So I prefer, I mean, usually when I design things, I try not to use a support. But on this one, I had to use a lot of support just to get it so it wouldn't curl. Because I actually had two different layer shifts. That's another example. I had two failed prints with layer shifts on the top part here. All right, so I already showed you my Fusion 360 profile. That's the power switch. That's a possible antenna wire or something you want to bring under the board. That is the actual uh, CPU connector uh, right there. And that would be the... ATX power supply, 24 pin connector, and if you want to actually have like a like a single GPU, uh, this will allow you to get your uh, PCIe power through. Right, so it's time to shut this thing down and get going. Um, so this is the lid on top of the box. All right. So I actually made it a little bit bigger, so I could actually tuck all the wires inside the box. Um, yeah, that way it would be all or super organized, and you just have the wires that you need coming out. Here's a closer look. So I, I created these channels to be able to organize the wires in here. That way I could keep everything nice and compact inside the box. And then uh, I also have this power connector on the front of it. It's going to go right there. And I'm going to have a wire that goes back. That's actually why I created these little slots. And that's going to feed back onto the motherboard for the power switch. Alright, so I gotta solder, I'm going to cut that and solder it. And get the switch in. And... I got this on mount on the top cover, so now I'm going to just try to wiggle it in like that. Get all the wires in. Alright, so I also put some spots in the bottom for legs. That way I should improve the airflow. Yeah, a couple of vents down here. Uh, so these are M3. So I actually do have some of these things right here, but I also have uh, some sticky ones too. Either or. I definitely need better light in here, but... So in case you had like a, like a GPU, you wanted a GPU mine, uh, that little slot here is for the power cable for the uh, PCIe. Go right there. Let's take a look at this real fast. I'm going to get this back into my operation. Power supply. So yeah, I wanted all the wires to be organized inside the box so you didn't have a bunch of wires hanging everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually designed this for a CPU miner, but this could also just be a regular computer case. You know, GPU or no GPU. Self-contained unit with minimal wires, so... Either or, but uh, I'm going okay, to get this back into mining operation. And uh, take a look at it. Alright guys, there it is. So I could probably get a couple more on there. I'm kind of running out of space here. So I'm actually mining two GPUs. That's a 5950X, that's a 5800X. Yeah, cool. Space saving, nice and compact. Um, I'll put both my designs, version 1 and version 2, on Thingiverse down below. Link down below. Put a link down, uh, we can get the, the switch thing there, right there. So, um, Alright, yeah, mining Windows. This one's doing about, uh, I mean, it does about 4,000, 3,500 to 4,000. Raptorium mining. Um, Alright, guys, cool. Uh, put it down below. So, it's exactly what I was uh, hoping for. Alright, awesome.